Okay. Uh, good afternoon, or almost uh, good evening. I'm here to introduce Paul Barker. He is from Fox IT, uh, the IT security company that is a major thank you sponsor of this event. Um, uh, he is responsible for products that relate to state secrets. He used to develop um, those products himself, and he's now a manager of that area. Uh, he's worked there for seven years. He's got a degree in computer science from the Technical University of Delft. Um, he's going to answer some interesting questions today, uh, such as what has espionage got to do with protecting your own secrets? He'll give us a hopefully unique insight into the world of international government espionage uh, and tell us a little bit about what history can teach us about espionage and what that means for you and I and protecting our secrets. So now to Paul to give us some state secrets. Please welcome him. Thank okay, thank you, welcome. Does it work? Can I, anybody hear me? Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as already said, I'm going to talk about the world of espionage, the world of spying, the world of protecting secrets, and especially about what that means for you, because you all have your personal secrets probably, and you might learn something from how this may help you. But it's a rather shady world, so it's very hard to, well, give a concrete overview. Um, so it's about protecting secrets, about protecting secrets at the highest level. And, well, as the title already states, I can already, well, give away, it's not about the, the cryptographic algorithms you use. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so first let's introduce myself. I'm Paul Bakker. Um, I'm maintainer of one of the open source uh, embedded SSL libraries called Polar SSL. And um, I work at Fox Crypto. Fox Crypto is a unit of Fox IT, and we mainly focus on a very specific target, namely protecting secrets, government secrets from other governments. So that's a really special world because it's very different from protecting secrets you normally have and from the normal attackers you have on the internet. And I'll show you later on why. Um, so. Espionage is one of my daily uh, well, involvements. Uh, not doing it myself, but the world of espionage. And uh, um, as I should mention, all, everything in this presentation are my personal statements and opinions, and they're not well, made by the government or by, uh, by the company. Later on, I'm giving the option for questions, but as you might imagine, there are a few questions which I won't answer, and then I will use the standard phrase, no comment. And just to be very clear, no comment means no comment. It doesn't mean no, but I'm not going to tell you. It doesn't mean yes, but I'm not going to tell you. It means no comment. It's like a quantum state. It can mean everything. OK. Before I started this presentation and working on it, I did a small poll uh, um, within a group of uh, security experts, paranoid people, about what do you use for protecting your secrets? What measures do you use? Why do you use them? And what do you really want to protect? And that gave some interesting insights in what people actually do. Most of the things I, pro I do myself, and you probably do as well. So the information it gave me is that most people well, actually want to protect their personal information. Their photos, their, well, their per really personal photos, uh, um, chat logs, the things they do on the internet protecting their privacy, and focusing on their personal being, email as well. Uh, um, one of the main reasons given was, well, I don't like to be fished. I don't like to have uh, uh, my identity taken. So I'm really careful about my financial information, my banking information. Keep in mind, this is not the regular people we're asking. We're talking about security experts and people that, well, try to really protect their information. One of the most important things, of course, key material, your access to your servers, that's really important for us. The measures taken by people are, well, quite obvious probably. Most uh, um, are familiar to everybody. You see a focus on really digital security, so the standard things like antivirus, firewalls. Uh, um, the more, 
Well, basic things like disk encryption. Uh, a lot of people use TrueCrypt, containers, hidden OSs, protecting their secrets. Um, I know people that have personal password guidelines to actually make themselves use the, the, the proper passwords they want to use. And there's a lot of things in the physical security area. People have alarms, vaults, and I even have somebody that, that goes one step beyond that and that's building its own laser-guided alarm system within his home, protecting his secrets. Well, it might be a step too far, I don't know. Um, at the bottom of uh, most of the slides, I indicated tiny URLs for references on the internet that, well, relate to this information. As I said before, most people focus on a, on a few aspects. What, what their main targets are, are, uh, um, well, protecting their own privacy, which is a really important thing, and protecting from the random hacker, the, the, the malware attacks, the, the, the just general attacks that you find on the internet and at a daily basis. And an important part is preventing identity theft. Nobody wants to have their full identity on the internet and having a, well, somebody use it for a, a, a their own purposes. Um, but you see, it's really about mass protection. You're protecting about the mass attacks. Um, you're not really protecting against, well, my brother that wants to snoop my email. Um, what you can see from this uh, presentation, uh, of, of from, the, uh, uh, from the poll, is that the protection measures provide really basic but thorough security for information on a very broad sense. And nobody really has real adversaries. It's all, well, friends and family are in, in the list, but there are no real adversaries. And with real, I mean adversaries that are really scary. And in my sense, that are, those are the law enforcement agencies, the really, well, well-grown criminal uh, organizations and government organizations. Most probably do see them as a risk, because I know a lot of people that see them as a risk and want to protect their privacy even from the government, but they don't actually talk about it. And what I say in the second bullet, there are no real adversaries, I hope. Well, I assume that the people that did have real adversaries weren't gonna tell me, because they probably didn't want to tell me that they had some really scary information anyway. But the interesting question is, Mass attacks are simple. Mass attacks are on the internet on a daily basis. But what happens if you don't have a mass attack as an adversary, a common hacker? But what happens if you have a real adversary? And defining a real adversary is a bit hard, but what if a real adversary is somebody that, well, government agency? We'll go into a step later about what the options are there. But it's really hard to tell what, what happens from the perspective of security. I mean, you know what you have to do to protect against the threats on the internet, but what do you have to do to protect against a government? It probably changes the entire game. And it does, I can tell you already. It really changed the game, and it does teach us a bit about what we can do to protect our secrets, because the espionage world is a nice guideline for showing what you can do personally or what, you, what you're supposed to uh, keep in mind when protecting your own secrets. To give a bit of an, well, uh, uh, overview of how security, how I rated security is, at the bottom of the security barometer, there is, well, oh, the common people. They don't really do security. They have a Norton antivirus installed because it was pre-installed on their PC anyways. They probably have a Windows firewall and well, it probably ends at that point. Well, they have net protection, but they don't even know that. A level higher, you have the security aware people. You have the people that really do know about security, probably all the people in the, in, in the room here today, and that know that you have to do a bit more to protect your secrets. At the topmost echelon of the security, you have the governments. They really operate in a different ballpark. And, well, you can use that information, and probably we're interested